Hi, my name is Mary Wilson. I am a lifelong resident of the Oromocto Fredericton area and I love my community and my province. I have been an advocate for job creation and small business owners in the Greater Fredericton area for the past 20 years and I'm looking forward to the opportunity of being your MLA in the Oromocto Lincoln Fredericton riding. I am married to Rob Wilson, a teacher and high school football coach. We have two grown children, our son Bill and our daughter Bobby. My mother, Lavina Fraser, lives next door to us, and I have four brothers, Wayne, Gary, Bob, Tom, Fraser. Um, sadly, we lost our amazing father, Bill, in 2003. I'm proud to say I grew up in a military family, and I will always be grateful for the sacrifices made by our military members and their families. Working with independent business owners in our region has taught me that our people right here have the will and determination to grow our community and province but we need government to support our businesses with common sense policies and the government must get out of the way. I have never been associated with any political party, but I decided to run under the PC banner with Team Higgs because I have seen firsthand in our community the need for more jobs in the private sector, not less, the need for lower taxes, not more, and the need to have better services for veterans, seniors, children and hardworking families. We are all paying too much in taxes under the current government. We pay more in property taxes, power bills, gas taxes, and in fees. But sadly, services are down, jobs are down, and transparency and accountability are down as well. New Brunswick households cannot afford to be taxed another $1,200 per year in a carbon tax. It must be stopped. We are already paying too much gas tax and HST. A new PC government will fight this latest $1,200 tax grab. The current government talks about how it spent millions of dollars more in health care and education, but where are the results? A PC government will turn this around. New Brunswickers love their homes and communities. It is important that we focus on keeping our people in our province. In order to do this, we must provide the necessary tools to help our New Brunswick companies flourish so they can create more private sector jobs. Over the past 20 years, I've had over 12,000 one-on-one -on -one meetings directly with independent business owners in the Greater Fredericton area, and the knowledge and relationships I've gained will benefit our community. I want to be elected as MLA in the Oromocto Lincoln Fredericton riding so I can work with you to create jobs in our community. I promise you hard work. I promise to do my best. I promise to listen and work with you. I won't let you down. If you have any questions at all, please call or text me at 440-MARY. Between now and September 24th, vote for me, Mary Wilson. Hi, I'm Chris Austin, leader of the People's Alliance and candidate for Fredericton Grand Lake. As I'm sure you're aware, we have an upcoming provincial election on September the 24th. Now before you go to vote, I'm asking you to consider where we are as a province. Think about the taxes that you pay as a resident of New Brunswick. And then balance that with the government services that you receive in return. I mean, let's face it, our education system, our health care system, our infrastructure, everything around us has been on a declining scale for years. We cannot take any more taxes, and yet our government services do not reflect the high taxes that you and I pay. As a party, we've always been uh, very upfront about hitting the issues head on. We don't want to pivot from the tough topics. We want to talk directly to you, the voter, and to show you that we have a plan to reduce taxes, balance the books, eliminate the deficit, and enhance quality government services. We'll do this by stopping corporate handouts. You must realize that every year we give approximately $200 million to big corporate insurers, places like TD Bank, to create jobs. Unfortunately, this does not produce long-term economic viability as our unemployment rate continues to hover around 10%. We believe that by ending duality, ending corporate handouts, we can use that money to lower taxes and keep more money in your pocket so that you can spend on the local economy and see New Brunswick become prosperous once again. Now I understand 
There's traditions that are held there between liberal and conservative parties that go on generation after generation. But we have to ask ourselves, how is that working? We continue to see New Brunswick on the decline. We're the only province to see more people leave than came in. Everything seems to just be on this downhill grind as we move forward. We want a different approach. We want an approach that puts you first, that gives you your voice back in government. I believe that this election will be a historical moment for this province. I'm asking you to consider the People's Alliance. Visit us at peoplesalliance.ca to learn more. And if you have any questions, visit the local campaign office. I'd be happy and I would love to speak with you about our plan for a prosperous New Brunswick. Thank you very much and I trust you have a great day. Good evening everybody. My name is Gerald Burke and I'm the leader of the new KISS New Brunswick political party. I started this party because uh, we wanted to, um, I went around to all the parties to find out who had a solution to deal with the debt and there was no party that had any solution to deal with the debt. So I decided, well, the best thing to do is to start a new party. We, um, I was a dairy farmer and I had 58 cows and I grew it to 365. And I built a brand new barn and had lots of machinery and new milk equipment and all that. I had a very large debt when I got allergic to cows. So I was talking to my lawyer and he said, he suggested I go bankrupt. And I said, no, I will not go bankrupt. Uh, I didn't want to leave anybody with the debt. So I went to my creditors and I sat down and I worked it out with them. It took several years to pay off our debt and we did it. And I feel that's exactly what's going to be done in the province of New Brunswick today. The debt is the most serious condition we got. We're paying $82,000 an hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to pay the interest. And that money should be going to health care, uh, senior services, education, and other programs for the, um, for the, uh, you know, the people of the province instead of going to the interest in the banks. Um, I really feel that there's uh, lots to be done, and uh, I'm, uh, I own 358 acres of woodland. Uh, I'm very concerned about the wood lots, and I know you haven't heard much about me because the CBC doesn't put me on. Uh, they say I'm too new, and uh, I had a meeting with the Urbans, and I told them that I wanted them to stop spraying, and I also wanted them to change their practices from uh, clear cutting to select cutting, which is a lot better for the environment and a lot less chance of flooding. So those are the reasons that I don't very often get in the papers. We have uh, several other issues. Uh, New Brunswick hasn't got a constitution. And without a constitution, you can't hold the politicians accountable. And another thing that is, New Brunswick is a drive-through province. One thing that this KISS party will do is put tolls, uh, nine toll booths around the province that will collect tolls whenever you come into the province. You can drive all around the province and you don't have to pay when you go out. But coming in, you pay three fifty for a car and uh, that's uh, you can get that back. If you're in a Brunswicker, you can get it back. We'll change the form on the Income Tax Act so you can file that, uh, your receipt and get your amount that you paid for the tolls. So that way no, New Brunswickers really don't have to pay in the end, but everybody will have to pay when they come in to keep it honest and clear. Uh, other things is, is uh, I'd like to say is that don't ever think that a small group of people can't really change things and make this country a better place. Uh, you look at the ambulance service, the fire departments, uh, Oh, even uh, the IWK. Uh, these were all groups of people that had ideas. They didn't have money and they turned around and, and made great big improvements in this country and that. So I think that uh, we got uh, nine candidates running. Uh, I'd like to head more, but without much media coverage, it's uh, difficult to get uh, people aware that you're a party and that. And uh, we are going to do as good a job as we can. So I really appreciate uh, Rogers for giving us this opportunity. And uh, I hope that uh, 
if there's a candidate, KISS candidate in your riding, you'll support us. But if not, I would suggest that you vote anything but Liberal or Conservative. Thank you very much. Hello viewers, and especially the voters of Fredericton Grand Lake. My name is Glenna Hanley. I am the NDP candidate in the riding of Fredericton Grand Lake for the September 24th provincial election. I would like to thank Rogers TV for giving me this opportunity to speak directly to the voters. This is an historical election in New Brunswick and for the new Democratic Party. Just over 50% of our candidates are women, and this is something that has never been achieved by any party before in our provincial elections. Our party leader, Jennifer McKinsey, was determined to involve more women in politics, and she has achieved this ambitious goal. Voters, let me ask you, don't you think it's time we got off of this teeter-totter of electing liberal, and then conservative, and then conservative, and then back to liberal. We need a shakeup at the legislature in Fredericton. We need greater diversity and new voices. Among our 49 NDP candidates, we offer the greatest diversity of any of the parties. Our candidates are from all walks of life with a rare mix of careers and experiences. A little bit about myself. I grew up in Sussex in a large family. Politics was a frequent topic at the dinner table, and it's always been an interest of mine. I have an education degree from the University of New Brunswick, and I taught elementary school. Then I went to work in government, and while I was doing that, I took an evening course in writing. I was encouraged to get into journalism. I graduated from the King's College School of Journalism in Halifax, and that was the beginning of a most rewarding career. I am a single parent, or rather, I was a single parent. I feel now that my son is more the parent. The major thing that prompted me to run in this election is the politics of division. This is a frightening trend that we are seeing imploding in other countries. It is in our face every day in Donald Trump's America. And some would say that the politics of division is what helped Doug Ford get elected as premier in Ontario. I am concerned that this is cre creeping now into New Brunswick politics as well. The idea of winning votes by pitting one group of citizens against another would be a step back in time. Is this the kind of New Brunswick that you want? Do you want a provincial government with policies that pit neighbor against neighbor, that divides people along language lines, along religious lines, that would turn away immigrants just to get votes. Please, people, let's not go there. I want to offer the good people of Fredericton Grand Lake <coughs> the politics of hope, not in the rose-colored glasses fashion. We all know that there are some tough issues to tackle but we can tackle them in ways that are fair to everyone. The NDP wants to offer a hand up to the people that need it. The first way we would do that is to increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Another would be free tuition for a New Brunswick Community College, and we would reduce university tuitions by 25%. I can recall a time when kids would leave high school and go out and get a job that doesn't work anymore. Employers want educated and trained workforce, and we need to provide that. A personal priority of mine is to offer more adult literacy and adult education. The Liberals and Conservatives might tell you that those pro programs are already in place, but they have not received any funding increases for years. Another issue is tourism. It could create a lot of jobs. Where is the Coal Miners Museum in Minto? Ever heard of it? No, me neither. Governing is all about priorities, and I think the NDP has the priorities in the right order, the action and plans that will best serve our province and our people. On September the 24th, please vote for me and the NDP. Thank you. Hi.
I'm Pam Lynch, your PC candidate for the riding of Fredericton Grand Lake. Brian Gallant is ruining our province. He has raised taxes and fees on just about everything, and it has cost the average family an additional $2,500 a year. His government is taking in a billion dollars more than before. Sadly, we are now the highest tax province in Canada. But I ask you, where are the benefits? And yet, he has nothing to offer but more of the same. More wasteful spending and more tax increases, including a carbon tax that will raise the price of gas by 12 cents a litre. How can you afford even higher taxes than we have now? How can our province afford it? Brian Gallant must be stopped. Our progressive conservative team, led by Blaine Higgs, is offering you a better way to govern. Blaine is supported by a great team of candidates, all of whom share his vision, and all of whom are up to the challenge we face, the challenge of saving New Brunswick. I have great faith in his leadership, and I am proud to be part of his team. Blaine Higgs knows that to get real results, we need a team approach. Not just a team of his cabinet colleagues, but a team that extends beyond. Our PC team has good ideas, but we know we are not the only ones who do. We know others have good ideas as well, and we need to take advantage of that. And that is why we will engage and empower our civil servants, business people, professional organizations, experts, and the public. We will invite them to the table as partners, and together with them, we will solve the problems we face and provide real solutions. We have a big job ahead of us because there is a lot that needs to be fixed. And it's going to take a lot of effort by a lot of people to get the job done. That is why we are asking all New Brunswickers to unite behind our effort to save New Brunswick. People want to know their government is looking out for them. They want to see their tax dollars spent wisely. They want to see fair policies and hiring practices in the civil service. In short, they want a government that puts their interests first. I believe in the people of New Brunswick. I know that the vast majority are people of goodwill and good intent. They are people who care about their province and want to make it better. Better not just for themselves, but better for future generation, better for their children and grandchildren. It is time, people from every region of our province, all of us, it's time to join together, shoulder to shoulder, working in common cause. It's time to harness our collective energy to turn the dream we share into reality. The dream of making New Brunswick everything it can be, everything we want it to be. We can and we will. Better together. The time has come and the time is now. A PC government will not raise your taxes and we will not waste your money. We will offer you hard work and good government. We will not let you down. To the people in my riding, if you elect me, I want to assure you that Fredericton Grand Lake will get the attention it needs and deserves. The promise I make to you today is the same as before. I will work hard for you and I will continue to do my best to serve you. I wish to thank you for all the support you have shown me in the past. I offer you my continuing commitment and I ask for your support on Election Day. Thank you. Hi New Brunswick, my name is Jenica Atwin and I'm running for a seat in the legislature as part of an amazing green team. I'm a local woman, mother and educator, born and raised right here in the capital region. I'm representing my home riding of New Maryland Sunbury with great pride. Growing up here has afforded me the skills and ingenuity to get the job done with a passion for people and finding solutions. If elected, I will work hard for families, seniors, veterans, people with disabilities, women, newcomers, and the natural environment. 
I will protect local economies by creating new jobs and fighting for rural recognition, ensuring that the hardworking men and women of New Maryland Sunbury are able to thrive. I am also committed to improving our health care. A green government would hire 40 new nurse practitioners to ease hospital wait times, ensure accessibility to primary health care, and help support our family physicians. We would operate eight community health centers with collaborative health teams located in areas that they are needed most. We want to empower doctors, providers, and patients to make decisions that affect them on the ground. By removing barriers such as caps on billing numbers, we want to ensure pharmacists, optometrists, nurse practitioners can prescribe medications so less people are ending up in our ERs. We want to increase efficiency and ensure affordable medications by supporting a national pharmacare program. I will ask, ask tough questions and seek diplomatic solutions. Bringing our citizens together is essential for the work ahead, with an understanding that a strong, sustainable, vibrant economy goes hand in hand with stewardship of the environment. I am committed to transitioning our neighborhoods to self-sufficiency, making it easy for all of us to do better. I'm committed to my fellow educators, teachers, counselors, administrators, support workers. You know what is needed to improve our system. Better communication, collaboration, and partnerships are necessary to move us all forward. We seek to decentralize our education to better reflect the needs of our communities and ease the impact of rural school closures. I want to inspire our youth to set goals, to reach their true potential and keep their talents right here in beautiful New Brunswick. I want to see the promise of free universal child care and post-secondary education become a reality. I will be a voice in the legislature for our most underrepresented. I am personally committed to supporting the victims of domestic and sexual abuse by challenging our justice system and societies to better our current outcomes. I am also personally committed to combating addiction, barriers to mental health, and ending child, youth, and adult poverty. I am ready to do my part. Je suis prêt pour faire mon parti. Puis, j'ai encouragé mes amis, mes constituants, à faire, à faire le même. Je suis fier de notre culture acadienne et autochtone. Je suis fier de nos contracteurs et nos innovateurs. On besoin d'être unifiés, débuter et confiants lorsque nous abordons des questions importantes. Notre trajet en avant vers un système équitable, le travail significatif et bien payé, les vies avec moins de stress, plus de joie pour notre famille et une tendance de notre environnement qui comprend Stop Spraying NB, tout ça pourrait être maintenant. Nous sommes les solutions. Nous sommes le futur. Ça commence ici. It starts here. Je m'appelle Jenica Atwin, puis je représente la circonscription de New Maryland Sunbury pour le Parti Vert de Nouveau Brunswick. The Green Party of New Brunswick works for you, and I will too. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Jeff Carr. I'm the progressive conservative candidate for the upcoming election for the riding of New Maryland Sunbury. I spent the last four years traveling around this riding, and one thing I committed four years ago is that I would be approachable, accessible, and open. And I can tell you, that I've tried very hard to live up to those three words. I've had a very strong presence in the entire riding because I am here all the time, not just at election time. I'm very proud to have been able to build partnerships with many people, organizations, and our municipal governments in the riding of New Maryland Sunbury. I've celebrated with you. I've mourned with you. I've laughed and cried with you. That's what a dedicated MLA does. I've proven that I have that commitment. But there's lots more to do, and I'm very excited to be part of a team that will put its people before politics, using real experience to obtain real results. Team Higgs will get results in healthcare by creating a Women's Health Advisory Council, reduce hip, knee, and gynecological surgeries wait times by 50%, mental health supports, our party is the only party that is seriously talking about investing in mental health supports. We're going to reduce the wait times and the wait lists for assessments, diagnosis, and treatment of learning disabilities in our children and youth by hiring 20 new 
private sector psychologists. And we're going to create up to 10 accredited internship positions for postgraduate psychologists. We currently only have two. We're going to take the politics out of the road maintenance priority list and make that list public and transparent. No longer will this list be hidden in a minister's office and people have to beg to have their roads and infrastructure fixed. We're going to see that transparently done and we're committed to that because Team Higgs is going to put people before politics. Team Higgs is the only party that's talking about improving outdoorsmanship. We're going to create a licensed bundling system to allow hunters and fishers more opportunities and help them save money while obtaining more licenses at one time. We're going to evaluate a senior's discount on hunting and fishing licenses as well. We're going to regularly meet with stakeholder groups like the New Brunswick Wildlife Federation and implement a science-based wildlife management program for a wild turkey hunt in conjunction with farmers. Team Higgs will set the table to allow New Brunswick businesses to be more competitive through the tendering process here at home. We will review legislation that will level the playing field between our companies and the outside companies in our province. We are going to give our New Brunswick companies a competitive, healthy advantage so they can compete and hold jobs right here in our province. Marwood comes to mind when I talk about this. Marwood was wrongly uh, used by MB Power in the sale of, of, of power poles. And many of you have heard me talk about that over the last few years because I am the only person, I am the only candidate over the last couple years that have, stri have strived to protect Marwood, to stand up for Marwood because Marwood is the bread and butter of our riding of New Maryland Sunbury. And finally, Team Higgs will do this without raising your taxes, but by managing better with real experience for real results. New Brunswickers are, are taxed out. We will fight the carbon tax tooth and nail. This carbon tax is going to add 12 cents a liter of gas beginning in the fall to mid-January. $1,200 per family. You and I can't afford that any longer. No longer can we afford wasteful spending. We need to measure where every dime goes in this province if we want real results. And we're going to use real experience from real stakeholders, real professionals in the fields to get those re results. I am so proud to be part of Team Higgs. I am so proud of my colleagues from all over the province that really want to make a difference, to do it for the people in this province, not for the politics of this province. So on September 24th, I humbly ask for your vote to vote for Jeff Carr and re-elect me into the Legislative Assembly of New Brunswick. Thank you and God bless. My name is Alex Scholten and I'm proud to be the Liberal candidate for the riding of New Maryland Sunbury. I entered this election in order to give back to my community. My family immigrated to Canada in 1952 with 17 children and $145 in their pocket. They landed in Russia Gornish in 1954 and acquired a farm there but had little to no understanding of how to cope with our long Canadian winters. The assistance and guidance of neighbours and a supportive community helped them make it through. Flash forward 20 years and the family who had received a hand up from their community was able to start a small business empire with over 25 convenience stores across the province that at one time employed over 450 New Brunswickers. My wife Tara and I moved to New Brunswick, or sorry, to New Maryland about 15 years ago in search of a place where we could raise our two children. We had heard about the fantastic school in New Maryland and the caring community. Over the past several years, we've come to really appreciate the support we received in the community and are happy to now call New Maryland our home. I want to give back to this community that has given me and my family so much. I've been asked often why I chose to run for the Liberal Party, and I can honestly say that I found, my, I found that this party, more than any other, shares my desires to help our communities. In fact, our party's election slogan is fairness and opportunity. It's a privilege to run for a party that has great vision for New Brunswick families, focusing on creating opportunities and fostering fairness across our province so that every family can thrive. 
Over the past four years, this government has made record investments in health care, education, infrastructure, and seniors care. And all the while has increased employment, increased population, and grew the province's economy by 5.5%. And this has been done while also achieving a budget surplus of $67 million in the 2017-2018 year, as confirmed by the Auditor General. This is important to note because it represents the first budget surplus in this province in 10 years. During this campaign, the Liberal Party has announced a continuation of these investments and more help for small businesses, a renewal of our economic development funds, and helping New Brunswickers in the export market. All of this is going to create more and more jobs. I'm proud of the Gallant government's accomplishments, and that's why I'm running in this election as a Liberal candidate in New Maryland Sunbury. I've often heard that our riding needs more experienced leadership, and I believe that I have a unique background that could greatly benefit the people of this riding. I have a business degree and a law degree from the University of New Brunswick and a Master's of Business Administration from Dalhousie University. I've practiced corporate commercial law on Bay Street in Toronto and also for several years here in New Brunswick. I've owned and operated small businesses for the past 20 years. And I was also president of a national trade association that represented over 26,000 small businesses operating in Canada with municipal, provincial, and federal governments. I'm deputy mayor in the village of New Maryland, and I'm also, I've also volunteered with many not-for-profit organizations over the years, including the Boys and Girls Clubs and Big Brothers Big Sisters of New Brunswick, the Fredericton and New Maryland Soccer Associations, Ignite Fredericton, and the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce and their Business Immigrant Mentorship Program. It's been through these experiences that I've come to appreciate the value of listening first before you are able to represent or advocate. I've been given two ears and one mouth, and I firmly believe that politicians should use them in that proportion. In the past six months, I've had the pleasure of visiting over 11,000 people in the New Maryland Sunbury riding at their doorsteps. Many have told me I'm the first politician they've ever seen at their door. At no time was there any pivoting of conversations or avoidance of difficult issues. If I am to represent this riding, I need to hear what is on people's minds. These conversations were very much appreciated and will help guide me immensely if I am to represent this riding. If elected, I pledge I will continue to meet with the people of this riding and not wait until the next election. You will see me again at your doors. And I'm asking for your support. Vote for me, Alex Scholten, your Liberal candidate for the New Maryland Sunbury riding. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bonnie Clark and I'm running for the People's Alliance Party in Fredericton South. I believe the People's Alliance Party is the one that's going to make the change for us. Uh, it's a party of common sense, it's a party of hope. I believe in the leadership, Chris Austin, and the candidates that are running, we're all going in the same direction. I think the biggest problem that I have with this particular riding, there's many problems that need to be addressed, but the health care is number one. We need more medical doctors, we need more nurses, we need, need more staff at the Dr. Everett Chalmers Hospital. The wait times up there are absolutely unacceptable. Um, I was there with my husband in February and I saw a gentleman in the hallway. The, the nurse was trying to take his blood. She tried nine times. There's no lighting. You know, we built a great big part onto the front of the hospital, but we need no more infrastructure. We need to get people into these hospitals that are working, that are highly trained, and we need to help the people that are coming there for emergency situations. I think that the issue is that because myself, I'm older and I'm aware of seniors' needs, and also I think that the government perhaps um, needs more um, connection and partnership with people like the Nursing Home Association, the doctors, the, like their, their groups, and more partnerships so that they understand these complex needs. 
that we have. And that's what I would do. I would be working more with these different associations that are experts in the field, but at the same time, I would be talking to my constituents. I would be asking them, what do you need? I know in the last couple of weeks, I've met with many, many, many people, a lot of seniors that are living independently, but they need a lot more supports. Those are things that I would like to find out more information about. I want to hire more people, but highly skilled people. Raise the wage up for the, these folks. Right now, <coughs> I don't know if you guys know that we are $14.5 billion in debt in the province of New Brunswick. One of the biggest questions that I've been asked is, how are you going to create jobs? Well, we are going to work with the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, they have a wonderful association. They, they understand small business. We're going to cut the tax to small business. We're going to uh, promote small business and we're going to help stop the uh, handouts to big corporations that are coming in here, quick fix, and then they're gone. We're going to stop that and we're going to build from within with what we have. We want small business owners to, to flourish and to be able to create jobs. We want to keep our youth in New Brunswick. I know for myself, my daughter and my granddaughter went out to Fort McMurray and, and it, was, it was a real break in our family and that's, we don't want to lose any more people. We want people to stay here in New Brunswick and we want, we're going to work with all of these people to, bring, to make that happen. The other thing is the education system. It's a huge issue <coughs> and when you talk about taking chocolate milk out of the school, which I believe has been reversed that decision, that's just a drop in the bucket. We need to work with the, the students, we need to work with the parents, we need to work with the teachers. We can't be having decisions made here and put down. We need to work from the ground up and bring our people together in the province of New Brunswick. I, I want to be your MLA, I want to work with you. Most of you know who I am, you know what I'm capable of, but with the party of the People's Alliance and we can form that minority government in the province of New Brunswick, we can make a difference for you. Please trust us and give, get your hope back because I know for, for many of you out there, you're sitting in, in fear. We don't want you in fear anymore. We want to give you hope. Trust us and we will do that for you. Hi, I'm David Kuhn. I've been your MLA in Fredericton South for the last four years and I'm the leader of the Green Party, serving as the leader of the third party in the Legislative Assembly. Over those four years, I've learned a lot. And as I said, when I ran in 2014, uh, I wanted to be your voice in the Legislative Assembly. And I have done that. You know, being an MLA, uh, you really learn in detail about the issues that are uh, facing everyone in your community. And uh, that includes things like uh, poor access to mental health care. One of the early things that I learned about particularly from young people was it was very difficult to access mental health care and then from talking to the professionals that the, the, f the extent of mental uh, health challenges for young people has been going off the, uh, off the scale in terms of depression disorder and anxiety disorder and the care is just not there. So that led to me, for example, to really champion uh, the need to improve access for mental health, uh, mental health care in the Legislative Assembly. Um, as an example, and, and there are many, many examples where issues uh, were brought to me in the community, either to my office or in the many neighborhood meetings uh, I've held over the last four years, or just directly to me uh, as uh, I've met people in the community and at community events. Uh, things like uh, access to uh, care at the Chalmers, the long waiting times in the ER. Uh, I've heard that over and over again and so it's something that I dug down into because that's the way I do things. I go to the ground, talk to the people involved to understand the problem and see what they think the solutions should be. Uh, and that's exactly what it did in terms of the wait times in our ER. And what I learned was that our doctors in charge of the ERs uh, were seeing this as a, um, an issue of, of patient safety, that the long wait times were threatening patient safety. And they told me the kinds of resources they needed to uh, alleviate those wait times in terms of extra uh, help. And I brought 
uh, that to the floor of the Legislative Assembly and championed the need uh, to cut the wait times in the uh, ERs of our city hospitals, of the Chalmers Hospital. And uh, it's so important, the fact that it is a question of patient safety. And so there's got to be a sense of urgency um, in addressing these things. And that's what's lacking uh, today with uh, uh, the current government, both the Liberals and the Conservatives in the past. Is any sense of urgency to really meet real needs that people have. I hear that at the door during, the, during this election campaign from seniors who have said, you know, between the Liberals and the Conservatives, we've heard that they both want to help us stay in our home. But when they've gone looking for home care support, they can't find it. So there's been a lot of spin about what the intent is on the part of uh, government. And uh, the reality, the substance is just not there. And when you think about it, secrecy is just, is out of control surrounding the actions of government. And why is that? Well, it's because, you know, when you're, when you're trying to control the message and hide the truth, you're going to maintain a high wall of secrecy around the activities of government uh, to hide that from your Brunswickers. And my, my commitment to you is to be a strong voice in the Legislative Assembly, to help throw open the curtains on government secrecy and to fight uh, for the people of Fredericton South to meet your needs as you need them in a timely manner so that everyone's got the service they need uh, when uh, they find that, that that's something that uh, they have to access. So I'm, we'll continue, of course, uh, should, should you reelect me, to uh, be very present in the community, very active in community events, very much uh, reaching out to hear from you through neighborhood meetings uh, and of course my door is always open uh, at the constituency office and, and I'm always available on the phone because when it comes right down to it uh, an MLA's job is to be a representative of their community and that's what drives me uh, is to do the best I can to represent you and that means listening and I've listened and I've heard you and I've taken action uh, as a result both directly in helping people in our, in our community uh, to help make their lives better and in the f from the floor of the legislature to help make everyone's lives better. So I hope on September the 24th that you will consider re-electing uh, me in the next uh, uh, provincial election. My name is Chris Durant. I'm the NDP candidate here in Fredericton South. We know that this, it's time for a change in our province that going back and forth between liberal and conservative governments have only left our province in deficit and have forced our young people to go west for work. But there's good news. Jennifer McKenzie and the NDP have positive solutions to make our province a better place. But before I get into them, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I live on Needham Street in Fredericton and I work as a lawyer on King Street. I've done legal research for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and for the United Nations. J'étais né en Québec et je suis pratiquement bilingue. I'm running for the NDP because it's the only party that I see putting forward positive solutions that will make a difference in our community. One of those solutions is we want to invest in home care. We know that when seniors are able to stay in their homes longer, they're happier and they get the retirement they've worked so hard for. It also means that it's less expensive for our healthcare system. It's more expensive to provide care to a senior who's living in a nursing home or a hospital. That's why we want to undo the Liberal government's short-sighted privatization of the management of the extramural program. As soon as they did that, home healthcare workers were getting paid less for their costs for mileage to driving to clients' homes. This in turn has meant that people in rural areas like Boys Town have had harder time getting home health care workers to, to service them. This in turn means people are in the risk of going to the nursing home sooner. The NDP wants to end this problem by investing in our home health care services. Another positive idea we're putting forward is we want to increase the minimum wage to $15. After inflation, this past Liberal government only raised the minimum wage 60 cents. We all see the people who are suffering in our communities, and we know no one in our community benefits from such low wages. 
That's why the NDP wants to raise the minimum wage a dollar a year until it gets up to $15. That would give small businesses time to adjust, and that would give small businesses the time to discover that actually when the 30% of working New Brunswickers who learn, earn less than $15 an hour are, have, are earning more money, that will benefit the local economy and there'll be more money in our communities. Our province has already lost so many of our young people to having to find work out less. It's time to build our local economy so that our children can come home. The NDP has lots of positive ideas, and I urge you to check out our website at nbndp.ca. There you'll find details about our plans to make community college free, to lower the cost of post-secondary education for all students, and to in invest in home retrofitting programs to, so that folks can uh, find the proper insulation for their homes and bring their home heating costs down. For all those reasons and more, I hope you will join me in voting for the NDP on September 24th, and to get, together we'll begin the first steps to making our province a fair and prosperous place. Thank you so much for your time and have a great evening. Hi there. I'm Susan Holt, the Liberal candidate for Fredericton South. Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Susan Holt, puis je suis votre candidate libérale pour la circonscription de Fredericton Sud. Thanks for taking a couple minutes to learn more about me as you watch this clip. I grew up here in Fredericton South. I was raised in Sunshine Garden, went to school here, had my first jobs here, serving uh, ice cream at Tingley's and ringing in groceries at Save Easy all the way through to doing environmental impact assessments for Washburn and Gillis, and I graduated FHS. I went away to school and to work around the world, and then I chose to return to New Brunswick to raise my family here. My partner John Holt and I have three little girls, Molly, who's six, Paige, who's four, and Brooke, who's 11 months old. I love Fredericton. It's where I've chosen to live, and it is a city I would be very proud to represent in the legislature. I've been working really hard to earn your vote, I have knocked on 4,915 doors over the past few months and had, I think, 2,946 conversations with you. And in those conversations, I've heard you tell me what you care most about. You've told me that you're really interested in us having a strong education system here in New Brunswick, that you want to see better health care and better access for your loved ones, and that finally you want to see our economy growing and creating the kind of jobs that keep our young people here and bring new people back, bring new people here. <laughs> and so let me tell you a little bit about what the Liberal government is going to do in each of those three areas. First, in terms of education, we are investing in our early education system with a free daycare program that gives all kids access to strong early childhood education. We've put $7 million into our literacy program to make sure that young people in our K-12 system are learning how to read and gaining literacy skills at an early age. We're going to modernize our trades education in our schools and make sure people are graduating with relevant skills. In the post-secondary um, field, we've increased access. So our free tuition program and our tuition re relief for the middle class means that anybody who can qualify to go to university can regardless of their wealth. Really excited to have seen more than 7,000 students take advantage of that program so far. And so now that you can go to university or college, we've also taken the burden off of after university by eliminating interest on student loans for New Brunswickers. If you stay here, we will take away the interest to make sure that that education doesn't cost you more and more. But most importantly, when you graduate school, you want to find an employment opportunity. We are doubling the youth employment fund to ensure employers are creating jobs for new grads. So that means that you can get access to post-secondary education, it'll be affordable with interest rate relief, and there will be employment opportunities for you thanks to the doubling of the Youth Employment Fund. I'm really proud to be part of a government that's making this kind of investment in our education system. You told me you care about health. There's lots we're doing there. I'm going to highlight a couple things for you. First and foremost, we are increasing the number of health professionals practicing here in New Brunswick. We are recruiting doctors and nurse practitioners, licensed practical nurses and specialists to make sure that you have access to the care and the professionals that you need. We are investing in the infrastructure and the equipment that those professionals need to practice here in New Brunswick. We've introduced a new non-urgent care model to move people from emergency rooms to care environments where they're going to be better served. And we've continued to support uh, 
credits and retrofits that let people stay in their homes longer and increase the amount of home support that they can get access to. Finally, on jobs in the economy, I'm really proud that this government has seen strong GDP growth over the past few years because we've been really strategic about where there's growth in the cybersecurity fields, investing in tourism to see growth in fundy and hospitality operations, also in areas like our smart grid opportunity and new agricultural opportunities, all to help increase the wages in New Brunswick and grow more than 4,000 new jobs in this province. So I've been listening and hearing you tell me that these three things are important. I've been taking those notes and I will bring that voice into the decision-making tables on your behalf. I will bring you into the decision-making rooms with me. I'm the person with my experience in the New Brunswick government, in the private sector working in technology companies and in the nonprofit sector leading the Chamber of Commerce and the Business Council. All these perspectives equip me to bring your voice and you to the table. So I ask on September 24th for your vote. Merci beaucoup. Hi everyone, bonjour tout le monde. I'm Scott Smith and I am the Progressive Conservative candidate for Fredericton South. I'm representing Blaine Higgs and hopefully the next government of New Brunswick. I want to do this because I know I can make a difference both to Fredericton and to New Brunswick. To my city that I grew up in and to my province that my people have been here since the time of the Loyalists. My background, I have 23 years of military service so you can depend on me. I also supplemented that with some elected experience. Eight years as a community leader, six years on the Fredericton Regional Service Commission. So I know the issues affecting our riding, the pool, the playhouse. I also know how I can contribute and help. I chaired an audit committee where I introduced control measures on public spending. That is something we desperately need in New Brunswick today. Right now we are hemorrhaging money out of this province and we are trying to make up for it by taxing fewer and fewer people more and more. It is not sustainable. A society that tries to tax itself in prosperity is like a man who tries to lift a pail by standing in it. So clearly we need a better approach than what is being seen with Brian Bland. That is why I'm proposing that you vote for a Blaine Higgs government with myself inside of it so that we can get a grip on this spending, get control of the deficit, and put downward pressure on our debt. And in this way, we'll fix the foundation of our house here in New Brunswick. And once we fix the foundation, we'll be able to house things that are really important to us in a sustained, permanent fashion. Things like healthcare, where we want to cut those waiting times in half. Like education, where we make sure our children are coming out literate. And for opportunities, so our young people can stay here. We have detailed plans for each and every one of these issues. We will make it happen. Please feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to talk about these details, because I love to. We want to make sure that we have a province here where people can stay and have a quality life that's meaningful. That means allowing businesses to flourish. That means looking after our seniors by providing good home care so that they can have the best quality of life that they deserve. It means being able to make mature decisions about our province that aren't geared for the next election, but are meant to make our province better for the next generation. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to mention the incumbent, David Kuhn, who's been MLA here, and he's done a fine job. I respect that man. He's brought up some important issues. He's talked about important issues. He's mentioned important issues. He's given attention to them. But with all due respect, I think that's, uh, now that that's been brought forward, we need to now take it to the next step. I've heard all the talking. I believe action is required. And I have capabilities in these issues. As a community leader, I developed a land use plan that enshrined environmental protection in it while meshing it with a pipeline. I've worked on all kinds of issues where I've been able to actually lower taxes and increase spending and yet provide a sustainable future. And I am the only candidate in this election who actually has experience as an elected official on a green energy project, in fact the biggest one in our area, and that's the gas generation plant. 
at our landfill. So I know about these issues, and that's why I want to work in them in the next government. And to do that, I will need your help. I will need your support. I will need you to be brave and not conform to what society wants you to vote for, but for someone who connects to you and who you know in your heart will do good work. And I'd like to humbly present myself as that person and ask you for your vote in this election. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Hi, I'm Stephen Horseman, your Liberal candidate for Fredericton North. After retiring from the Fredericton Police Department, I wanted to continue to serve the people of Fredericton North, and it has been an honour and a privilege to represent Fredericton North in the legislature for the past four years. Your Liberal government has been working to move New Brunswick forward with a plan based on the key principles of fairness and opportunity. Growing a fairer economy has been and will remain one of my focuses by listening to your concerns, much has been done in the Fredericton North area over the past four years. An election campaign is a great opportunity to discuss the actions we have taken and the actions we will take to create jobs, grow the economy, and might make life better for all New Brunswickers. I want to highlight some of the many accomplishments of your Liberal government, including the creation of thousands of jobs, as well as the fact that New Brunswick now boasts the second lowest gate, uh, gender wage in Gap Canada, in the second lowest gender wage gap in Canada. I am out knocking on the doors, and I've done so every year, not just the selection years, so I can reach as many people as possible in the Fredericton North. To listen to them so I can keep getting things done, for example, building a new courthouse and the Centennial Building refurbishment, providing free tuition for college and university students who need the most support and providing free child care to New Brunswick families that need it the most. We funded hospice and the downtown medical clinic to make health care more accessible to everybody. Since 2014, your government has been moving our province forward with a plan based on fairness and opportunity for all New Brunswickers. This has included contributing to the airport expansion that's been long overdue, which will result in more convenient travel but will also make it more inviting for more businesses to locate here in Fredericton. Your government has also focused on education, making major investments in our schools, hiring 100 new teachers, and bringing your trades back into the schools. Your government has done all this while achieving a budget surplus of $67 million in actual 2017-2018 results, as confirmed recently by the Auditor General. We are working hard to create a fair economy for, economy for all New Brunswickers. We will raise the minimum wage to $14 an hour. I'm proud of our government's achievements and accomplishments, and that is why I'm offering in this election as a Liberal candidate in Fredericton North. You have asked for certain priorities in Fredericton North. For example, the Nashwaxis Bridge crossing over between Devon and Barkers Point has been refer re repaired and resurfaced with a sidewalk at it for safety for pedestrians. Flashing caution, caution lights were installed along the ring road approaching the Brookside Drive intersection. These lights now will inform motorists uh, that the traffic light change will be at the intersection when you get there. These warning lights have greatly reduced the number of traffic accidents at this intersection. Your safety is very important to me. As you know, the construction of the traffic circle at the intersection of Two Nations Crossing and Ring Road has begun. This interchange will allow for better access to services and shopping on Two Nations Crossing. It will also reduce the congestion at the intersection of Maple Street and 105, thus improving safety. I am also happy to tell you that a re-elected Liberal government will be implementing a free child care program in New Brunswick for families making less than $37,500 per year. This will make the transition to the workforce much easier for all parents. A re-elected Liberal government will enhance its signature free tuition program by raising the threshold for the free tuition benefit from $60,000 to $70,000 and thereafter indexing it to inflation. Ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on of all of the things we've done for this area. Hospice, the Two Nations Roundabout, the lights on the Princess Margaret Bridge on the north side allow freer traffic 
uh, I want to continue helping people, uh, whether it's just to get a New Brunswick driver's license, to get military personnel to get free, uh, not free, but the, uh, the license plates on their car. I, I still want to continue helping people. My family's name on the, on the north side of the Sewells and Neils. These are families that will continue to help people in the past, and I just want to continue doing that. So please, I'm asking for your support. Please re-elect me as the Liberal candidate for Fredericton North. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Lynn King, and I'm your People's Alliance candidate for Fredericton North. I was born and raised in Marysville, and I have a small business management degree from Ashworth College. I've also played in the Canada Games, and I've been in five softball nationals as well. And uh, when I go door to door, what's brought to my attention is the lack of uh, family doctors we have in our province. And uh, you want to look at why that is. So we compare ourselves to other provinces, and we realize uh, we have a billing number system. And this billing number system allows uh, to hold us back. And it's far, by far outdated. It's dictating where doctors have to be in our province. And it's not allowing them to open up practice where they want to. It's a huge turnoff for doctors to be told where they have to practice. Another issue that's been brought to my attention is our long ER wait times. What the People's Alliance believes is that we need to in, empower our nurse practitioners. By doing that, it can take the patient load off of our ER doctors and it will allow our wait times to decrease and we'll see some improvements in those situations. Another issue that's been brought up is home care. We have many seniors that do not want to live in a nursing home. They want to spend the rest of their lives in the homes that they built with the memories they've made with their children and loved ones. We want to allow nurses to go to these seniors because we believe everyone deserves the right to live in their home. When it does become the time for them to move into a nursing home, we need to make sure that those nursing homes are properly staffed. Right now, building more nursing homes is just part of the puzzle, but we need to make sure that beds are not empty because of staffing issues. And finally, one of the most important issues that's occurred in Fredericton North is the dual buses that we have. Right now, you'll see buses for Francophone and Anglophone districts going by, and those buses are half full. We can combine those buses into one, fill it, and save between 16 and 19 million dollars annually. We need to bring common sense back to government. We need to change the way this province is being run. Unnecessary spending on dual systems is not going to help us get out of debt. Thank you. Hello, I am Amber Bishop, and I am your Liberal candidate for Fredericton, York for this election, my first election. This government is committed to working hard to provide opportunities for New Brunswickers. The Liberal government has made a great deal of progress over the past four years that is all based in fairness and opportunity. Over the past four years, your current Liberal government has cr helped create thousands of jobs and has brought in 90 doctors. We are promising to open several non-urgent care centers to help relieve the current stress and wait times on our ERs. The Liberal government is a government that cares for the people of New Brunswick who need it the most. One of the promises a re-elected Liberal government has shared that I am most passionate about is a minister in charge of women's affairs. Examples of ways that this government is supporting women and families in New Brunswick is our free daycare program and daycare relief for the middle class. As a teacher, I know that if a child comes to school ready 
we are setting them on the path for success. But free daycare isn't just about sending a child to school ready. It also provides opportunity for mom and dad to head off to university or trade school to upgrade their skills where they can receive free tuition to attend and gain what they need to support the New Brunswick economy. They'll be in school all the while knowing that their children are safe and getting what they need in their daycare. A re-elected Liberal government has promised to raise minimum wage to $14 an hour over a four-year period. In addition to this, we are looking to freeze power rates. This will allow families who need it the most to keep their hard-earned dollars in to their own families. By providing access to free daycare and free tuition and raising the minimum wage, we are working together to break the cycle of poverty. We have, I have worked in rural schools for the better part of my 15 years in education. And I believe that every student needs to have the opportunity to shine. A re-elected Liberal government is promising to invest in the trades in our schools. Tradespeople are the lifeblood of New Brunswick and the Liberal government wants to offer opportunities for all New Brunswickers. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a career politician. I am an educator and I have spent my life in schools working to help the families of New Brunswick. In running in this election, I feel that I have the opportunity to be a teacher to thousands. I sincerely want to help educate, to work together, to listen, and to provide solutions. I believe in New Brunswick. I believe in the people of New Brunswick. I come from a family of tradesmen and self-made entrepreneurs. I am the only child in my family who has gone on to higher education. I grew up in New Brunswick. I returned to New Brunswick. I've built my family in New Brunswick, and I plan to stay in New Brunswick. I look forward to seeing what we can do together over the next four years. What I can promise you is that I will be there for you. I will listen, and I will work with you. Vote today for a Liberal government, a government that stands for fairness and opportunity for all. Hello, my name is Kirk McDonald, your progressive conservative candidate in the riding of Fredericton, York. It has been an honour and a privilege of a lifetime to serve the last 19 years as a member of the Legislature and sit in your seat in New Brunswick's Great House of the People. Working together, we have made New Brunswick an even better place to live, to work and to raise a family. Working together, we have improved road safety with the new $120 million 36 kilometer Nashwalk Marysville bypass opened in 2014. We have upgraded several stretches of the Royal Road and rebuilt the section of Route 107 between Nashwalk Bridge and McLagan Bridge. Working together, we have improved our community infrastructure with investments in local halls, playgrounds, ball fields, curling clubs, legions, rinks, markets, schools, and community centres. I was proud to be part of a government that opened a new nursing home and health clinic for the people of our riding in 2013-14. And for the 50 plus well-paying jobs that it maintained in our riding for generations to come. At this time, I would like to thank the many hardworking volunteers who have helped work with me on these projects over the years. But our work is not done. I want to take the experience that I've gained both in government and in opposition along with the contacts I've made, and work with the nonprofits and small business alike to make Fredericton, York even better in the years to come. If we have not already done so, very soon we will be visiting your home and asking for your vote to get New Brunswick back on track. My name is Kirk McDonald, and on Monday, September 24th, I encourage you to vote and respectfully ask for your support. Thank you. Je crois que le Nouveau-Brunswick est un des meilleurs endroits de vivre. Having lived in four other countries and two other provinces in Canada, I really can tell you that I believe that New Brunswick is one of the best places to live. It is an honour and a privilege that I now get to call a beautiful piece of property in Taymouth, along the banks of the Nashwalk River, home. I'm Amanda Wildeman, and I'm the Green Party candidate for the riding of Fredericton, York. 
Je suis Amanda Wildeman et je suis la candidate pour le Parti vert pour la circonscription de Fredericton, New York. I live there with my partner Ryan, my dog Tex, my cat Scarlett, my chickens, my turkeys and my bees. We moved from Fredericton to Taymouth so that we could grow our food, raise our animals and begin to build a life of rural self-sufficiency. What we found was so much more. Taymouth is a vibrant community full of regular events at the community center, welcoming and helpful neighbors, and a river that is frequented by locals and visitors alike. While canvassing around the riding of Fredericton, York for the past six months, I have discovered that many other parts of our riding each have their own unique sense of community pride. I have thoroughly enjoyed my visits on people's doorsteps, in their kitchens, at community events, These visits have further reinforced my belief that communities know what they need to thrive. And if you elect me as your MLA of Fredericton, York, I will do everything that I can to facilitate growth and expansion of each of our communities. From Douglas in, in the West to Marysville and Pennyac in the East, to Brookside West and McLeod Hill in the South, from Napa, up to Napadogan and Maple Grove in the North, not to mention everywhere else in between. Another topic that comes up often at the door is there is an overwhelming mistrust of politicians and government. And it's usually well-founded. Promises have been made and not kept. Calls and emails have gone unanswered. And folks vote for a, what they perceive to be a qualified candidate, not realizing that three parties in New Brunswick all strongly believe in the party whip system which forces MLAs to vote with their party rather than the people who voted them in. This is not the case with the Green Party. Elected officials will always get to vote with our constituents' best interests in mind. A third common theme that has struck me on the doorstep is that young people don't learn about civics in schools, and many graduate not knowing how our system works. I have compared this to playing cards. Once you know the rules, you can start to actually play the game. Keeping our young people in the dark about their civil right and duty does not advance our democracy in any way. I am running for the Green Party because I have been inspired by the long-term vision and policies of the Green Party and by the leadership of David Kuhn. He has consistently demonstrated a different way of doing politics over the last four years. It turns out that it actually is possible to have a discussion about an issue and get straight answers. It is possible to have a conversation with a member of another political party without calling them names or bringing up something from 20 years ago. And it is possible to work across party lines to build legislation that is actually beneficial for all New Brunswickers rather than just a few corporate interests. A green development strategy includes support for our small and medium-sized businesses, the backbone of New, Brunswick, New Brunswick's economy, many of which are based out of the homes where I've canvassed, It includes policies to ensure that we can use our natural resources both now and in the future, whether that be our forests, our rivers, or our streams. A green education policy of one is one of decentralization so that schools can be empowered to make the best use of their resources. Green education policy is also ensuring that classrooms have enough resources for teachers and students so that our inclusive education policy can be a success while raising New Brunswick's literacy levels to the national average. A green health policy is patient-centered and focused on preventative care rather than the current acute care situation we find ourselves in. A green budget is one that ensures that we are able to pay off our debt so that future generations are not crippled by it without over-harvesting our natural resources to do it. The more I talk to each and every one of you, the more I am convinced that New Brunswick has everything that it needs to thrive. We need to stand up, we need to be proud, and we need to take care of one another so that we can work together to solve these issues head on. This September 24th, I encourage you to vote for the future and our province, and that future, my friends, is green. Hi there, I'm Dominic uh, Cardi and I'm the PC candidate for Fredericton West Hamwell in the upcoming provincial election. Et, uh, merci à Rogers pour l'opportunité pour uh, envoyer cette message aujourd'hui. So, 
for me to run in this election, it was uh, for a couple of reasons. When I look at the province today, I get, I get worried. You hear people like Université de Moncton economist Richard Sayan, who talks about how we're heading over a cliff. That if we keep on running the province the way we have been running it, that in just a few years' time, we could be in a position where we have to go to Ottawa and beg for a bailout just to keep the lights on here in New Brunswick. And to me, that's totally unacceptable. This is a rich province, always has been. We used to be at the center of the world, leaders in things like shipbuilding and our forest sector. And over the last few generations, especially the last few years, I think we've lost our edge. Not because New Brunswickers aren't smart, not because we don't work hard, but because in the end we have had governments that haven't allowed us to reach our full potential. So what I'm hoping to do in this election is to offer the folks in Fredericton West Hamwell the chance to vote for a candidate who's going to push to get this province moving again, who's going to push to take real action to get some real results. Because it's all about getting results. We, we've seen a government the last four years with the gallant liberals that has pushed to spend more and more money, often directing it to their friends, whether it's uh, uh, well-connected liberals who run cannabis companies in Toronto, or folks up in uh, Beldoon who apparently are going to get a pig iron smelter at the same time as the province inflicts a carbon tax on the rest of us. To me, that's not about getting results. It's about, that's just wasting money. The other night I was having a debate with Benoit Bourque, the health minister under the Gallant government, and he was talking about how great it was that they were spending all this money. And then he talked about, a little bit later, he just sort of dropped a little bit of a bombshell, saying that there were all these positions that his government had created, but they couldn't fill them in the healthcare sector. And I thought that was such a good example about how spending money doesn't equal results. And then I heard a story from a doctor who said that up at the Chalmers Hospital, there was someone whose job it was, was to turn people away from the blood clinic because it was overcrowded. And I raised that with the minister. I said, look, this, this is an example of how spending more money doesn't equal getting better results. So as part of the Blaine Higgs PC government, I hope that I can work to get better results for you. So that means no new taxes, getting better results with the money that we have, focusing in with a laser-like focus on the things that really matter to people and things that the government is better at doing than the private sector, which to me means healthcare, education, infrastructure, obviously, the criminal justice system, social development. Those are the areas where everyone knows the government can do a good job if we work hard and work to get results. So we've got commitments to work hard on ending the illiteracy curse that has plagued our province for too long. A lot of people don't know this, but according to the Department of Finance federally, 56% of New Brunswickers can't read and write at a level that's high enough for them to be able to work using the written word in their day-to-day -day work. That's just not acceptable. We've got to work at reducing our wait times. Right now, if you're a woman in this province, you've got to wait 77 weeks to get access to a gynecologist, to get a gynecological procedure performed. So I don't know exactly what world the liberals think we're living in, because babies take a lot less time to come to full term than that. So that seems like a totally unacceptable example of how government, again, is spending money but not getting results. So a Higgs government, we're going to work to reduce wait times for gynecological procedures and for hip replacement and for knee replacement, reduce all of those by 50%. So when it comes to job creation, something that's really important to a lot of people, we're going to be focusing on a jobs tax credit that takes the patronage out of politics. Because that, to me, is something very important, that we can help small businesses and medium-sized businesses create jobs, but we should do it in a way that doesn't pick winners and losers. We should do it by just giving everyone exactly the same tax credit. But getting rid of patronage is something that is close to my heart. We need a transparent government where every decision government makes is open and public. And so that's why we're going to have an open access data portal that will make government decisions public and available to everyone. So you can see why we make the decisions we make in government. And if we go against that expert advice, you can draw your own conclusions. So I hope that on September 24th, that I might be able to earn your vote. I've got years of experience working in Canada and around the world managing multi-million dollar projects, working with uh, heads of state, people from all different works, walks of life, and it will be a real honor to represent you in the provincial legislature. Thank you and merci beaucoup. My name is Cindy Miles and I'm proud to be the Liberal candidate for Fredericton West Hanwell. This is the riding that I have called home for most of my life. I've raised my family here, volunteered countless hours in this community, 
and our family runs a business in this riding. I am invested in this riding because it is my home. And as a mother, daughter, granddaughter, wife, friend, neighbor, community member, and as a woman, I have never felt more empowered to fight for a seat at the decision-making table as I do now. I've had many life experiences that have brought me to this point. My work with the Santier Trail really opened my eyes to understanding the impact our actions have on the environment and to always be aware of our carbon footprint, which is why I'm so proud of this civil government's plan to combat climate change. And as someone that understands the importance of community green space, I am pleased with this government's commitment to support at least two new provincial parks. As the manager of two successful businesses in the Fredericton core, I understand the importance of the private sector as an economic driver, and we must ensure less red tape, better agility for our small to medium businesses. We need to make it easier to be successful. Having a minister focused on the specific needs of our small business is vital. This must be part of an economic plan that will grow and diversify our economy. Youth mental health is incredibly dear to my heart. I have volunteered full-time and co-created .CNB to see change in how we delivered services for youth and their families. We created a provincial movement and raised education and awareness throughout this province and elevated voices in the conversations that had not been heard before. And as the Director of Operations, I learned early on that community engagement is the path forward. People want to be involved in the issues that matter to them, and I am committed to ensuring that the voices of Fredericton West Hamill are heard loud and clear, and I will continue to engage with my community throughout my next four years if I am elected. What I have learned meeting with community members is just as important as what I have learned sitting around a boardroom table. I'm the interim CEO of a large not-for-profit here in New Brunswick, and this work has fueled my desire to see more collaborative partnerships between government, community, and the private sector. I see the possibilities that exist when communities come together, and it is powerful. It is these experiences that I am bringing to the residents of this riding, my home, my environmental business and community not-for-profit experience, and along with my integrity and desire to see a fair economy and opportunities for all New Brunswick families is what drives me to fight for the priorities of my riding. The families in Hamill need a school. I have fought and I will continue to fight for a school for Hanwell. Lack of access to high-speed internet should not be a barrier to accessing services in this riding. And we need to continue to invest wisely in infrastructure, like our roads and highways. We need to ensure our families are safe. Cutting infra infrastructure spending is not the path forward. Our families depend on safe transportation. The investments this Liberal government has made in infrastructure like the Woodstock Road and the Hamill Road will save tax taxpayers money in the long run. Fredericton West Hanwell, I'm enjoying our conversations at the doors about how to keep growing a fair economy while still investing in crucial services like education and health care. We must be innovative and create sustainable jobs. We have to continue to invest in education by hiring new teachers, bring trades back to the schools, and invest in our youth through programs such as the free tuition program, tuition relief for the middle class, and our youth employment fund. This is how we will continue to move New Brunswick forward. We have to reduce ER wait times. We need doctors and healthcare professionals now. We must be more collaborative in our healthcare model. The Liberal Party of New Brunswick is committed to investing strategically in healthcare, and as someone very familiar with chronic illness, I understand the importance of getting the services you need when you need them. Our aging population will double in the coming years. We must be proactive. Supporting a home first strategy allows our seniors to stay in their homes longer. And this civil government is investing in new and existing nursing homes and creating additional memory care beds so we can better support the quality of life our seniors deserve. I am listening, Fredericton West Hanwell, to the issues that are important to you. They are my issues. This is my home. And my commitment is that I will listen, I will respond, and I will act. On September 24th, I am asking for your support to continue to move New Brunswick forward. I'm Cindy Miles, your Liberal candidate for Fredericton West Hanwell. In our community, for our community. <laughs>
Um, I went to high school at NACWIC. After completion of high school, I went to Fredericton, where I studied economics with a business option at St. Thomas University. Completion of uh, my degree, I uh, went, uh, traveled, and worked abroad for a few years. On my return back to the area, I owned my own business for close to seven years, which I sold and worked in Fredericton for a few years. Now I'm presently employed with a local company, which uh, I'm a marketing and operations manager as they're going through a large expansion. The reason I'm running in this election is really about real representation. I really strongly feel that we haven't had pro, a proactive representative in our riding for a long time. As money has been spent in the northern portion of Carleton County and Fredericton, our residents have to gather together and rally just to get a cow path of a road fixed. This isn't right. We shouldn't have this kind of representation. We need better. We deserve better. And that's what I'm talking about. And this is what I'm bringing to you. I am going to be a better representation for you in our riding. This thought has to stop that you have to have the governing, the governing party, um, your representative, to get anything done. I'm telling you right now that as a member, as your representative, I will ensure that I will work with any governing body to ensure prosperity in our, in our riding. When it comes to our riding, we live in a very unique um, area. We have more fresh water, lakes and streams, and natural forest than any other part of New Brunswick of its size. In saying that, we also have the St. John River and the Matquack Dam running right through our riding. That's why I'm saying right now, we need to stop spraying, and we need to stop right now, ASAP. This, it, the studies have been done. Environment has been, the environment is negatively impacted. The health is negatively impacted, and as well, our economy is negatively impacted by spraying of our forest. A mixed forest is a natural forest, and we have to ensure our natural forest stays. We are, in Royal New Brunswick, losing jobs because of, in the forestry sector because of spraying. So economically, health, and environment are all negatively impacting. So I'm saying right now, we have to stand up and stop spraying in our province, crown and private lands. In, for a strong New Brunswick, I really believe we need to have a strong Royal New Brunswick. And having a strong Royal New Brunswick, we have to ensure that we live in our, in our, in, in our Royal New Brunswick as long as possible. In saying that, I am telling you that as a representative of this riding, I am assured that we have the proper health care services and ambulance services that are so we can stay in our homes longer. It's proven the longer we stay in our homes, the overall cost of health care drops dramatically. One last note, I do want to say that when Blaine Higgs was the Minister of Finance and Carl Urquhart was a sitting member, there was a land deal that was signed which negatively impacted the community of Nackwick by $500,000. Yes, a half a million dollars they took out of their revenue by signing that deal. They are asking that residents with a community of less than 400 households to come up with $500,000. If that's not a new tax, I don't know what is. And the Liberal government has had four years to fix this problem, and they haven't. I'm telling you now that as a representative of this riding, I will ensure that these things do not happen to us and they get rectified as soon as possible. This hasn't only neg negatively impacted our right, our, the municipality of Nackwick, it's also the surrounding communities. There's kids in Millville, Harvey, Tempernsvale, Southampton that are now paying user charges because of this land deal. This isn't right. I'm telling you now, if you elect me as your representative in Fredericton, I will stomp my feet and yell until they know what we need, what we want, and what we're here for. Thank you very much. On September 24th, ensure that you vote Rob Kitchen, NDP. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lloyd Morey. I'm running for the KISS party. It's a new party, not very well known. Um, I'm running in the Carlton, New York riding. Um, basically, a few people have joined together to start a new party. Um, various reasons. Um, some of them are personal, and uh, well, most of them are personal, of course. Um, we feel as though there's a need for fresh government in this province. Um, obviously, there's other fresh parties in the province at the moment, um, and that's a good thing. Um, it's a bit of a surprise to myself, even, that I'm, I'm running. 
Um, but I feel as though I need to put my money where my mouth is. I've been rather vocal about, uh, in particular, transportation infrastructure issues uh, in my riding. I uh, feel it's only the right thing to do if, if I've got a complaint. Uh, it, you know, perhaps I should try and do something about it. Uh, I've tried through various other venues, media and, and uh, public forum, uh, and uh, I'm going to give it a try this way. Uh, my hope is to make a difference for the people of New Brunswick, and in particular Carleton, York. Um, I've lived here all my life. I know the people. I operate a business in this riding. Uh, it's, it caters to farmers and business industrial. I do repair and fabrication work. I get a lot of insight from my customers and uh, I talk to them a lot. Uh, I know them, they know me. Um, through this experience, I, I feel as though I have a very good I'm in a good position to understand the people of my riding. Um, they're good people. They just need, they need to be, you know, we need to be look, looking after ourselves. I feel as though I might be somebody who'd be capable of doing that. I'd like to do that for you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jackie Morehouse, your Liberal candidate for Carleton, York. I was born in this riding, I grew up on a small farm here, and I continue to live in this riding, so I understand what it's like to be part of a rural family in New Brunswick. Our Liberal government has been working hard to move New Brunswick forward with a plan that's based on two key principles, fairness and opportunity. So today, I want to share with you some of the issues that are important to me and what I will work towards as your representative. The first is education. I understand the importance of education because it's changed the path of my life and the path of my family's life. I was a stay-at-home mom, but as my kids grew older, I returned back to university as a mature student. I completed my Bachelor of Science degree and then my degree in education. And when I graduated, I taught on contract at middle and high school areas, as well as spent a year teaching at the Micmac Willestaquie Center at UNB. Eventually, my educational experience landed me a job at a local software company, and within five years, I was vice president. This transition from a single mom to an executive at an international software company was due to my investment in education. Across New Brunswick, there are people with dreams of a better life and better opportunity for their families, and often that road requires an effective and responsive education system, whether it be in grade school, technical college, or university. That's why I support the educational initiatives of the Gallant government that increase educational opportunities right here in our province. We're making major investments in schools, hiring hundreds of new teachers and enhancing programs that allow our young people to get work experience in fields like the trades while they're still in high school. The government is also improving access to secondary tuition by expanding the free tuition and tuition relief programs to include more New Brunswickers. We recently announced measures to reduce student debt by removing interest on student loans for those that stay in the province. This is an investment in our future. I'm also passionate about educational opportunities for women in non-traditional fields like science, technology, and engineering, along with the trades. The inclusion of subjects like software coding in our schools is one way to increase the exposure of these subjects to women at a much earlier age. The dedication of the Department of Women's Equality helps to identify barriers for women and reduce systemic discrimination. We know that such, such programs work to increase gender balance in the workplace and reduce the wage gap for women. New Brunswick now boasts the second lowest gender wage gap in Canada. A second issue I'm passionate about is capitalizing on the tourism opportunities in the riding of Carleton, York. We live in one of the most beautiful areas in the province, and we need to invest in infrastructure and improve marketing to showcase these areas to visitors. I support investment in the waterfront development projects in Nakawick and upgrades to Mactaquack Provincial Park. These investments will return dividends to our area again and again. By making these investments, we ensure that the tourism dollars remain right here in our communities and the economic spin-offs will benefit all of us, from gas stations to grocery stores to ice cream shops. 
Infrastructure maintenance and development is always a concern for governments and the upcoming refurbishment of Mactaquac Dam will be a central focus during my term as MLA if elected. When the dam was originally constructed, there was very little consultation with communities regarding decisions surrounding tenders, contracts, resource allocations for local business people. If I'm elected as your MLA, that's going to change, especially since we're just two years away from the commitment and commencement of a $3 billion refurbishment project right here in our own riding. I believe that community leaders in the riding of Carleton, York must be at the table in the form of a working council, since this project will also offer up numerous economic spin-off opportunities, and we will be ready to seize those opportunities when they're presented. These proposed investments in our youth, our infrastructure, and our communities will continue to stimulate our economy and improve living conditions for New Brunswickers. The, the Gallant government has focused on turning around an economy that was in decline from the previous government, increasing opportunities, creating thousands of jobs and raising the minimum wage, all doing that while achieving a budget surplus of $67 million in the last year as confirmed by the Auditor General. First time in 10 years that our budget has had a surplus. I'm excited about our province's potential and that's why I'm running in this election as a Liberal candidate in Carleton, York. On September 24th, I'm asking you to ensure that Carleton, York has the representation it deserves. On September 24th, vote for Jackie Morehouse. My name is Amy Anderson and I'm running to represent the people of Carleton as the Green candidate in the upcoming provincial election on September 24th. I'm a musician, community volunteer, formerly the music teacher at Heartland Community School, music director at St. James United Church, and since 2012 I've been the Deputy Mayor of Woodstock. I'm in politics because I care about people. And I'm very frustrated with the way that both Liberal and Conservative governments have failed to make progress on behalf of the people of Carleton County and New Brunswick. I see the lack of transparency in provincial spending, secret deals that are never tabled in the legislature for taxpayers and citizens to read. I see the interference with the office of the Chief Medical Officer of Health and the refusal to fund New Brunswick's Auditor General properly so that she can do her important work on our behalf. I see the burnout in the health care system and people concerned about not being able to access primary care or a family doctor. This has a major impact on our families and our communities and even on our economy. I see the failure to seriously address climate change and to build a more energy efficient, low carbon economy for future generations. It's clear to me that going back and forth is not working and that the people of Carleton are ready for a real change. This summer I have personally knocked on over a thousand doors to hear directly from people about their challenges and concerns. The Green Party believes that real change begins here at home and we were the first provincial party to release our full platform online. You can find it at itstartsherenb.ca. That's itstartsherenb.ca. The Green Party also believes that an MLA's first responsibility is to her constituents and not to her party. This is one reason I have chosen the Greens. Leader David Kuhn has been very clear about this obligation. He has shown real leadership in the legislature and has spoken out on many other issues that the other parties do not want to discuss, including the need to end glyphosate spraying in our forests, the need for social assistance rates to increase above the current $537 a month, the pathway to a living wage and a basic income, the opportunity to transition to renewable energy, the benefits of a fair forestry policy, and the benefits of getting more local food into our nursing homes, hospitals, and schools. David was also successful in getting New Brunswick's first ever MLA Code of Conduct passed and eliminating corporate and union donations from our elections. This is a tremendous accomplishment for a single Green MLA with nobody to second his motions in the legislature. If I am elected as the representative for Carleton, I will work alongside David Kuhn to advance solutions to these issues. I will be a strong advocate for local people, local economies, and local communities. I know, we can, I know the challenges we face 
and my time as Deputy Mayor has shown me that we can make progress if we work together. The Green Party is also in favour of a more decentralised, community-led approach to economic development, health care and education. Too much centralised decision making is leading to a one-size-fits-all approach from Fredericton and that is not serving local communities well. With 37% of all jobs in New Brunswick happening in rural areas, a Green Government would create a Department of Community and Rural Affairs to increase support for rural communities. As Greens, we believe we have everything we need right here all ready to build a brighter future for Carleton. It's time to move ahead with a positive change and that's why I am asking for your vote on September 24th. This is Christy Culberson, your Liberal candidate for Carleton. For four years now, our Liberal government has been working hard to move New Brunswick forward with a plan that is based on two key principles of fairness and opportunity. Growing a fairer economy has been and will remain our focus. We're out knocking on doors so we can reach as many New Brunswickers as possible, to listen to them so we can get more things done, like providing free tuition for college and university students who need the most support, providing free childcare to New Brunswick families in the most need, eliminating the interest from provincial student loans for residents that stay in New Brunswick, and freezing NB power rates to help all families and small businesses. Since 2014, our Liberal government has turned around an economy in decline, helping to create thousands of jobs, making strategic investments in infrastructure, not to mention the fact that New Brunswick now boasts the second lowest gender wage gap in Canada. The Gallant government has done all this while also achieving a budget surplus of $67 million in actual 2017-2018 results, as confirmed recently by the Auditor General. I'm proud of the Gallant government's accomplishments, and that is why I'm running in this election as a Liberal candidate in Carleton. Carleton is my home and has been my whole life. I'm a believer in the people of Carleton and its rural ways, and the quality of life that we have here. I've loved raising my two children and here and always will be an advocate for the benefits of the country way of life. Since graduating from UNB in 1995 with a business degree, most of my adult life has been in the agricultural industry. I'm currently a project manager with Potatoes New Brunswick and lead the New Brunswick Potato Industry Transformation Initiative, managing 140 plus growers within the potato belt. I work with them on their challenges and engaging industry stakeholders on issues relevant to the goals of the initiative. So how does a country girl who gets excited about well-timed rainfalls and learning about how the physiological age of seed can affect potato yields go to knocking on doors and talking to people about their concerns and issues. I was approached by a good friend and asked if being a provincial candidate in the upcoming election was something I had ever considered. My honest answer, no. But then, as we talked some more, I realized I was actually interested. It was one of those gut check moments and my gut was saying, you should do this, you can do this. I could remember as a child the 1987 sweep of the province by the McKenna Liberals. These moments are the basis for my first political memories and were very empowering in my decision to seek the Liberal nomination for Carleton. I'm excited about the progress that the Liberal government has made over the last four years and as the Gallant government continues to move the province forward, I want you to join me in making sure that Carleton is part of this progress and that our riding has a strong voice advocating on its behalf. We need to grow our local economy by strategically investing in areas that will help Carleton. The resurfacing of, his, of the secondary roads in this riding will create jobs and make roads safer. We need to provide reinforcement to the industries such as the transportation and agricultural industry that already call Carleton home. And we also need to offer our support to the small businesses that are the lifeblood of our rural riding. Your Liberal government's plan that is based on fairness and opportunity will ensure municipalities such as Heartland have the opportunity to receive provincial funding support for projects such as the Central Carleton Community Complex. This proposed complex promotes wellness and provides a community with a recreational facility that encourages growth and sustainability. The funding should be based on need and not whether a neighboring community has a similar facility. 
nor should it be an empowered municipality's responsibility to fund these projects through property tax increases to its residents. Where is the fairness in that? Another cornerstone of, to growing our economy in Carleton is the plan to support the reconstruction of the Grafton train bridge over the St. John River. The economic benefits of this project will be the advancement of our area as a leader in outdoor recreational opportunities for all seasons. Projects like this that allow the province to partner with municipalities to encourage sustained economic development benefit everyone involved. With your Liberal government's continued investment in healthcare, education, small business, women's equality and New Brunswick families, the focus is on improving the quality of life for all New Brunswickers. Let's make sure Carleton is a part of that progress. I'm asking for your support. Vote for me, Christy Culberson, your Liberal candidate for Carleton. Hello, my name is Stuart Fairgrave. I'm your progressive conservative candidate in the riding of Carleton. I've lived in Carleton County for more than 50 years. I went to school here, as did my wife and our three children. I've worked in the private sector for more than 20 years. We are fortunate that all of our children live and work in New Brunswick. On January 2017, my wife and I became grandparents for the first time. It gave us an opportunity to reflect on what is truly important in life. And like you, we hope that our families are healthy, that they are safe, that they uh, enjoy life, and they get a good education, and that allows them to get a good job. Sadly, that's not the case for all New Brunswick families. The Gallant government has spent millions of dollars on education, yet our test scores have not improved. He's spent millions of dollars on post-secondary education, and yet our students remain the most indebted in Canada. He has spent money on health care, but our wait times are the longest in the country. Our seniors and people living on fixed incomes have seen their savings eroded under Brian Gallant, and in this province, New Brunswick has become the most tax jurisdiction in all of Canada. I believe that New Brunswick and New Brunswickers can do better. I believe that New Brunswick can become a have province and I look forward to the day when our children and our grandchildren can live in a province that doesn't rely on handouts from Ottawa. As your PC candidate, our government will focus on literacy and math in the classroom. We will reinstate the tuition tax credit so that our students don't have to live under overwhelming debt loads. We will cut wait times in half for hip, knee, and gynecology surgeries, and we will invest in mental health for our youth. We will respect seniors by protecting their assets and ensuring that they can continue to live in their own homes. A PC government will develop a work plan for every designated road in the province, and we will make this plan public so the residents that live along these roads can be ensured that their road is going to be safe and well maintained. We will begin immediately to create real economic opportunities that will allow the more than 30,000 New Brunswickers that are forced to live outside the province uh, to gain work to return home to good jobs and good paychecks. It starts with a balanced budget, a debt reduction plan, working with the private sector to create real opportunities, opportunities that don't require corporate wel welfare. I look forward to a better New Brunswick. As a province, we have done it in the past. New Brunswick has rebounded after the Great Depression, after wartime, and we've done it in the early 2000s. It won't be easy. It won't happen overnight. But together, we can make a better New Brunswick. My name is Stuart Fairgrave, and on September 24th, I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stuart Manuel. I'm the People's Alliance candidate for the riding of Carleton. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't think the province was in trouble. Uh, I'm just going to show a little bit of my platform or talk about a little bit about our platform. We uh, want to put money back in your pocket. Uh, how we want to do this? License your vehicles. If we get elected, you only have to license your vehicle one time. We want, uh, and that includes uh, trailers, uh, camper trailers, motorbikes, skidoos, stuff like that. That's money in your pocket. Uh, we want to eliminate the small business tax. We want to eliminate the double tax on a second property. Now, by doing this, we're telling people out west, you can come back here, set up a business, hire some people, and you're not going to get taxed to death. And if you own apartment buildings here, for example, now you have money in your pocket, you can. Uh, 
pass that on to your tenants or maybe build more apartment buildings, which means you're going to hire carpenters, plumbers, electricians, stuff like that. Get the economy rolling. Main reason we want to do this is uh, we are the poorest province in Canada and the highest taxed. So taxing the people to death is just not working. This is why we want to get money in your pocket. You spend it. The government will tax it. Now we're $14.4 billion in debt. We pay $700 million interest on that debt every year. Our plan for that, and that's $2 million a day. We could get a lot of roads fixed and hospitals fixed for $2 million a day. But our plan for that, one of our plans, is uh, we want these big corporations to start paying their fair share of tax. We want to eliminate, uh, or uh, make them, uh, we want to eliminate the corporate welfare. Uh, <clears throat> also, giving our tax dollars to these great big corporations like Irving's, Sears, TD Bank. Uh, the language issue, we want to eliminate the language commissioner's office. We want to take the money from that language commissioner's office, put it in the auditor general's account, now the Auditor General is a taxpayer's friend. She uh, investigates where your money goes and how it's being spent and she only has half the budget Nova Scotia has. So we want to give her a good budget so she can uh, open up some closet doors and see what falls out. Um, Wayne Grant, I, I, people have heard tell of Wayne Grant. Uh, he got fired by the language commissioner that for uh, doing his job basically just because he couldn't uh, speak French. Uh, Chris Austin was the only party leader that stand up and got him back. He uh, fought for him to get his job back and then, and then they put him in a parking lot in January parking vehicles. Uh, we're just not right. Nobody should lose their job on account of they can't speak French or they can't speak English. I don't care who they are, they shouldn't lose their job. Uh, the ambulance thing, we, uh, we have ambulances being shut down already now and, and in this uh, up and down the river, St. John River Valley because there's not bilingual staffing. We've got to use a common sense approach to this. We've got to, uh, here in Carleton, we don't need as much bilingualism. So, and, and we have the translation devices right on the ambulances. We have, uh, and it applies to people out over in, um, just in, in reverse in Carricot. It'll just, just in reverse and same as St. Quentin. Uh, we're not against bilingualism. We're just uh, against the improper use of, of it. Uh, we have two hospital systems. We want to combine the two hospital systems. Have one, we can save 40 to 60 million dollars. Uh, right off the top, we don't have to lay anybody off. We have the two school bus systems and we want to put all the kids on the same school bus where needed. I've seen it firsthand, an English school bus go by, three kids on it. A uh, French one go by, three kids on it when I lived up in Grand Falls area. Uh, we, uh, we want to combine them, put them on the same school bus, let them learn together and, and quit this segregation stuff. Uh, we want to have a free vote in the legislature, uh, which means there's a lot of stuff comes up in the run of four years. We want to have it, take it back, have it, uh, people tell us what their opinion is on it and have a free vote on it. We want to stop the spraying on Crown land, stop the clear cutting. Uh, I, uh, I want you to Look us up on Facebook, uh, peoplesalliance.com. Uh, keep me in mind, come September, Chris Austin's the party leader. He's got a good common sense plan to get this province turned around, heading in the right direction. Look him up on uh, YouTube. He's got some real good common sense videos. And uh, keep me in mind, come September. Thank you for your time. Good day to everyone. My name is Adam McAvoy, and I'm your NDP candidate in the Carleton Riding. I'm a healthcare worker who has taken an educational leave to go back to university to study nursing. I did this because I want to help patients get back to their families, get back to their friends, and get back to their work. I'm also running for public office because I want to help the people of Carleton in all aspects of their lives. I want to improve the many dimensions of health and living conditions, both of this province and its people, as a nurse or, if you choose, as your MLA for your riding. Like many of you, like me, are concerned about social issues within this province. Climate change, health care, road conditions, poverty, income inequality, employment opportunities, and so much more. So many problems can seem overwhelming and may even turn people away from politics. However, I want to promote with the NDP 
a vision of fairness and sustainability to address many of the issues harming our province. We've all felt the effects of our stagnant economy. We're seeing on the news daily the effects of pollution and climate change, and we've all wondered if there was a better way, a more sustainable and long-term way forward. We've all watched food prices, rent, and cost and the cost of everything rising, but wages are staying roughly the same, and life seems to be only getting harder for the everyday worker and their families. I'm running in this election because I'm concerned. I'm concerned about the living standards of low-income workers. I'm concerned about the affordability of post-secondary education, colleges and universities, and trades. I'm concerned about the financial sustainability of our provincial health care system and about keeping it accessible and public. The NDP has a bold vision for this province, where minimum wage workers are more fairly compensated for their hard work with a $15 an hour wage, where students do not need to suffer financially to attend college or university. We will give free tuition for college students and reduce tuition by 25% for university students and where seniors are supported within their communities through high quality public home care. I've talked to New Brunswickers across this province and they are excited by the NDP vision, a government that supports workers, supports families, supports students, seniors and minorities. New Democrats want New Brunswick and New Brunswickers to be able to work towards their highest potential. Together, we can make this vision a reality. This election, I challenge you to not vote strategically. Don't vote based on emotions, but vote this election for the province that you want to see. The NDP want a fairer, sustainable, and more prosperous New Brunswick, and I hope in this election you will give us your vote. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andrew Harvey, your Liberal candidate in Carlton, Victoria. For four years now, our Liberal government has been working hard to move New Brunswick forward with a plan that is based on two key principles of fairness and opportunity. Growing a fairer economy has been and will remain our focus. As your government, we want to keep the, minimum, the momentum going when it comes to creating jobs, growing the economy, and investing in crucial services like health care, education, and roads, so that we can provide a better future for everyone. As a government, and as your MLA for the last four years, I have been out listening to many New Brunswickers and in Carlton, Victoria, we letting them know what's happening and what's being done. Since 2014, as your government, we have been moving the province forward on many fronts. We have turned the economy from a negative to a positive. We have balanced our books. Now we have a surplus budget. We have created, with the business community, helped create thousands and thousands of jobs. We have provided for free tuition for college and university children uh, going to New Brunswick schools. And we have supported providing free childcare for New Brunswick families that need it the most. And, and, and another, another thing we've done is raising the minimum wage for the last four years from $10 to $11.25 per hour. Our, our Gallant government is focused on education, making major improvements and in investments in our schools, hiring 100 new teachers, and bringing the trades back to our schools. We are working hard to create a fairer economy for all New Brunswickers. We will reduce emergency room wait times. We will raise the minimum wage in our next mandate to $14 an hour, phased in, and we will freeze New Brunswick power rates to help all families across the province. I'm proud to be a part of the, the Gallant government, the accomplishments, and that's why I'm running for re-election as a Liberal candidate in Carlton, Victoria. It has been my honour for the last four years and privilege to re represent you, the people of Carlton, Victoria, and I hope with your support I'll have the chance to serve you for another four years. Carlton, Victoria is a special part of New Brunswick, and we have much to be thankful for as we live our lives in this beautiful part of the province. During my, your, my term as your MLA, I've worked with many groups in my riding of Crown Victoria to advance their community projects and very fortunate to do that. Throughout our Liberal mandate, I have been honoured to serve as the Minister of Agriculture, 
Mines and Rural Affairs, as well as the Minister of Environment and Local Government, but most importantly, as your MLA for Carlton Victoria. I have worked hard locally with all the local stakeholders, the municipalities, business community, and community groups on business growth opportunities with youth employment, uh, the fund that we have uh, with companies from Juniper to Centerville to Florence or Bristol Bath, Perth Andover, and the Tobik First Nation, Plaster Rock, and beyond. We have resurfaced 283 kilometers of roads in my riding in the last four years and we have more roads to be done on a priority basis. This is an investment of $61.5 million in Carlton, Victoria in roads and bridges in the last mandate. We have also tackled rural health care. We are continuing to make investments at the Tobik Valley Health Center in Plaster Rock. Uh, we have made major investments at the Hotel Dew Hospital in, in uh, Perth Andover to restore that and uh, uh, to a functioning, to provide certainty of that facility by raising it uh, above the floodplain. We have also built new ambulance stations in Perth Andover and Plaster Rock. We've also invested in uh, renovations at the Riverview Manor uh, Nursing Home in Bath, along with the nursing home in Plaster Rock, uh, the Tobik Valley. So these are major investments. Uh, there's some new investments that are being out there now, uh, being tendered for a new 60 bed nursing home in the Carlton area and 18 new memory care uh, beds in Perth, in Perth Andover. We've also invested in our schools. Uh, it's very important that we have very uh, up-to-date schools. We've made major investments in the Bath Community School, Perth Andover Schools, Plaster Rock Schools, Centerville, and Florence and Bristol. Uh, equally as important, we've invested in our communities, uh, working with 40-some local groups. Um, we've made major investments, over close to a million dollars of investments in small projects in around the communities from Riley Brook to Aroostook to Centerville to Juniper. There, but I also recognize there's more to be done. One of the major projects that hasn't, we haven't completed and we're working very hard with the municipality of uh, Perth Andover and the business community of Perth Andover is the flood mitigation file. So I really want to uh, finalize that project. I'm committed to standing up for your interest and I hope to be a strong voice in the next Liberal government. I want to thank my family for the last four years for the opportunity to do this. And on Monday, September 24th, I humbly ask for direct re-elect me as your provincial representative in Carlton, Victoria. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Margaret Johnson, and I'm your progressive conservative candidate for the Carlton, Victoria riding in the upcoming provincial election. I was brought up in Woodstock. I now live in Florenceville. I've been a classroom teacher. I've been a methods and resource teacher, and I've been an administrator. I've been in school for 44 years. Um, my husband and I own a little business in Centerville, so I know the challenges of having a small business in the province. Um, I've been brought up by a civil servant and a teacher to believe that you should always leave a place better than you found it. I also believe that you only get out of a community what you put into it. And to that end, that's why I'm running in provincial politics. Um, the time is ripe to put those beliefs to the test. Now, over the last six months, I have traveled from Tinker to the border, from Nicktaw down to Buckwheat Flats, and I have met some fantastic salt of the earth people who've brought me into their homes. Um, what I've learned from these people, I've learned that there's an overwhelming sense of frustration. People want to know where their tax dollars are being spent. They want to have access to expedient health care and access to a family doctor. They want to know that in their later days, there are going to be programs and facilities available for them to reside safely on their own. They want to know that they have roads that are car worthy, not just cars that are road worthy. They want to know that they can bring their families together, bring them back from the west so that nuclear families can live together in the same community. They don't want higher taxes and they don't want to have their assets grabbed as they get older. People have not given up in the province of New Brunswick. People are waiting. They're waiting for a leader to steer the ship to clear waters. They can handle bad news, but they want to hear good news. They don't want broken promises. And I believe on September 24th, Blaine Higgs and his team will be the ones to steer our ship into safe waters. So on September 24th, I want you to join me in making Team Higgs and the Progressive Conservative Party of New Brunswick the leaders in our province.
I'm Margaret Johnson. Please vote for me. Hello, my name is Craig Dykeman, People's Alliance candidate for Gagetown Petty Kodiak. Uh, a little bit about my uh, history. I'm, uh, I was raised in Jimseg, a rural community just outside of uh, on the St. John River. Uh, we grew up on a farm. We had uh, beef, produce, or apple orchards and whatnot. Uh, went to, uh, graduated from Cambridge Neurons High School and then uh, shortly after graduation I left for the West and uh, spent my career basically as an industrial firefighter, uh, a safety specialist and an environmental health and safety consultant. I uh, returned home just about three years ago, back to New Brunswick, and uh, I never really planned a career in politics. It was, uh, I got involved in a few groups, because I've seen what happened in New Brunswick, and uh, there was the Delosophite spraying, I got involved with that, and uh, the clear cutting came a concern because uh, the family is a woodlot owner. We, uh, as I got more involved and more involved, I uh, became more active, and uh, the Gagetown Ferry protest was another one of my causes. And as I became more active, I, uh, more people kind of coached me along and showed me to uh, take a look at Chris Austin. And then I met up with Chris Austin and I went to a few of his uh, town halls and I became uh, really impressed with his message. Um, rural development, rural uh, rebuilding our rural uh, infrastructure is very important to the People's Alliance. Our uh, population is 48% rural still to this day and our services keep dwindling and dwindling. We need to focus on that because uh, I can see from uh, being gone for so long and coming back, it's night and day as compared to when I left. It's, uh, if when I started to look back and seeing what happened, as our uh, rural infrastructure deteriorated, so did our economy. I do strongly believe and most of our, uh, uh, sorry not most, but our party strongly believes that that is very tied together. So we need to rebuild our rural infrastructure to get uh, our economy back together and that is helping small businesses uh, develop. Uh, we also had the Dykeman's General Store in the corner which is now closed as a, as a result of what was going on in New Brunswick at the time. Um, a lot of these small businesses nowadays, I'm, I've been around and meeting with people and talking to the business owners and talking to people who are wanting open small businesses but they're meeting roadblocks. Um, licensing, uh, permits, taxes, regulations are choking them and we have to uh, ad address that directly to uh, untie the hands of these people. New Brunswick is full of hard-working and honest people that uh, are try really hard but are coming uh, head on to these roadblocks. Um, another thing is agriculture. Uh, Nova Scotia, Quebec have also have boosted their agricultural programs where New Brunswick has backed off on ours. We need, we need to show our support with that and start getting back into that and uh, that will also see a direct result in the economy. Uh, the things that uh, Chris Austin has proposed with the taxes is, is not, uh, not foreign. I've, I've seen this happen in, uh, under Ralph Klein. Reduce our taxes and people come, the businesses come. We want to make a business friendly environment to draw the businesses in which will draw more employees which gives us a better base to build from. It's, uh, it's not a crazy idea, it happens every, uh, I've seen it happen in two or three places. So uh, we listen to the people, we, uh, we look to see working models and how that works and then build on it from there. Um, hope to uh, see you all around, I'm very active in the community and uh, I'm not going to be one of these office guys, I'm going to be out there working amongst you guys and seeing what's going on and hearing your problems and issues. So uh, hope to see you around and I'll see you at the Gagetown Fair here this weekend. Have a good day, thank you. Hello, I'm Marilyn Merritt Gray, the Green Party candidate for the riding of Gagetown Petticodiac. Also, I'm the deputy leader of the Green Party of New Brunswick. I'm a nurse, uh, a community mental health nurse, and also I've worked as a nurse educator for a number of years, primarily in rural New Brunswick. I've worked on a number of community um, health boards as well as different professional associations and with uh, ac different um, commissions and organizations with the not-for-profit sector. So people ask me why am I running and why am I running as the Green Party candidate? Let me tell you, I feel like we're at a tipping point. We're at a point where we need a different kind of leadership, a different kind of government representation. 
And I believe that the Green Party has that vision and has in their platform and in the work that the party has done is really ready to take on holding the balance of power in our new government in the, the days ahead. What I notice and what I care most about, I live in cars on the edge of Bilal Bay in the lower end of this riding. And I care that we have community grassroots representation, that our infrastructure, that our services for seniors, that our small businesses, and that sort of a representation that gives voice, that I can actually represent and meet with people locally and carry those issues and concerns forward. I hear that people are tired of the representation. The way that people have, have MLAs have represented them in the legislature doesn't fit with what, pe what our issues are currently. I, along with many of the people in my riding, went through different flooding episodes with the flooding in the Freshet, but also the flooding that Cherryville up in the Canaan River has dealt with. I'm very involved in looking at those infrastructure issues, the environmental clear cutting and the spraying issues. Most of all, I know healthcare though, and I know the issues that young families and that seniors, seniors deal with day after day in terms of focusing on what, are, what will be available for us in the years ahead. I believe that the Green Party has those solutions, the kinds of structural changes that we need. And I ask that you, when it comes on election day, that you consider and vote green and vote for myself, Marilyn Merrick Gray, on election day. Thank you so much, and I appreciate the privilege of actually running in this election and the privilege of meeting with so many of you during this campaign. Thank you very much.